Well, in Parliament, we have uh, policy debates. In that, uh, certain areas in, say, economical activities, industrial activities, educational activities, health care, and so on, uh, will be discussed. Now, in Parliament, there are many issues wherein I can participate um, so that that particular subject, like let's say urban development uh, and the budget to be sanctioned for that, or during budget debates, I can highlight the problems that will be found in my constituency uh, in regards to urban development. So specific instances wherein more allotment of funds will be required can be certainly brought to the notice of the concerned ministers at the time of debate. And in the process, I have to see that the allotment of funds for that particular subject for my state is adequate so that um, we can take a share from the amount allotted to the state uh, um, for improving uh, my constituency area where I would see the need. So that way, in every aspect of uh, debate, wherein various subjects and various uh, funding are required, I think there's going to be plenty of uh, opportunity to participate and, and also bring the need of the nation as such, because in certain areas need may be less, in certain areas need may be more. So that kind of information given to the, the government in power will certainly help in, in finding the right uh, solution to every problem. I think uh, I don't have any, any significant failure as such. God has been so kind to me uh, because he answered my short prayer, which I mentioned earlier, so well that till today, I don't think I had any failure worth naming, except that of my attempt to be in foreign service. But if, even if I were there, I don't think I would have done as good as I have done in police service. So I realized that that failure to get into the foreign service had been a significant failure as I turned my heart and soul to police service later on. And that's how people knew me and that's how I have been given this kind of sympathy, understanding and help by the people so much so that they have sent me already to Parliament once. So they haven't forgotten my humble sacrifice and all that I did for them. And so till today, though I am penniless, this morning in the newspaper in the Can Herald, it was highlighted that the car I own is uh, not second hand but third hand, <laughs> that to 1,000 Maruti, but I like it so. I still have it. My wife has been suggesting that perhaps we should change the car. I said I like this one because I like also the registration number, which starts from uh, M3, then uh, A2345. So that's why I don't want to part with my, uh, my little car. Well, many MPs make Delhi, Delhi where the parliament is located, as their uh, headquarters. They don't go and uh, visit their constituencies. They don't interact with people. They don't make themselves available even to recommend them for uh, better treatment in hospital, or admission in schools, colleges, and other educational institutions, even for uh, attending to weddings and, and funerals of the people in their constituencies. But in the last session, 14th 
Lok Sabha. I spent most of my time in my constituency coming down here every Saturday or Friday, flying back on Mondays. So to that extent, my availability will be there and I'll be in a position to know uh, what uh, my, my constituency people want and uh, what kind of uh, expectation they have from me. And also, um, I will keep them informed always when I will be coming and when I will be available. And local de area development uh, issues, like many people will have water problem, el electricity problem, etc. I have the habit of contacting the concerned uh, engineers or uh, highest uh, officials responsible for such uh, kind of improvement. So I have no difficulty in calling up anybody, even if I have not met them, seen them. I'll call them and uh, share with them the problem. And I had never had any, any difficulty in that for having been in the <coughs> government service before. I have that um, freedom of feeling and freedom of access just you know, to, to government officials who were all my juniors in the past and who are still there. In fact, in my time as district superintendent of police or as city commissioner or special commissioner, I never blind, blindly or uh, sort of uh, arrogantly close down any bars or any clubs or any discotheques. I used to do it in consultation with the business people uh, in the, in the con concern uh, activities like hoteliers, bar owners, etc. And I used to arrive at kind of a consensus wherein they'll request me, sir, from 10.30, allow us to, to do it till 11. And I would see no, no big reason as to why I, I should not say yes, because I know that many um, intellectuals, many uh, CEOs, etc., are always busy till late hours, till 10 o'clock, etc. So the time they might have to come and relax and uh, just meet friends could probably be up to 11 o'clock another half an hour or one hour. So I say, what the difference it will make by... But do you think it has worked and it has... It had, it had worked in the past, but this, there are certain uh, questionable activities in questionable areas where in the name of some business or something, people will, will indulge in immoral activities, etc. These are separate issues. Uh, we can always check and uh, control such uh, activities if we do it in a systematic manner and um, with the cooperation of the concerned people. The other security because of the I don't think it is, it is that much of a, a danger. We can certainly go along with this kind of uh, social activities like uh, drinking in the, in the pubs and even this dance. What does it matter? Let the people go and dance uh, happily so that it will improve their health. But if they indulge in uh, naked uh, kind of uh, you know, show and uh, kind of uh, questionable activities, certainly even this, the elders in the society will not allow that.